Hey everyone, good morning and uh, happy uh, start of the week on a Tuesday. Uh, hope everyone uh, enjoyed your day off in uh, honor of the fallen, uh, those who gave their life for our uh, country. And uh, it was a somber day and I hope you found a way to remember those folks and teach your children those around you uh, what what that day meant uh, but anyhow uh, just wanted to come on here I know we had talked about uh, another uh, message and I just wanted to really just come on here and give an excerpt of uh, our next message that uh, I feel the Lord's uh, kind of well did lay on my heart here and uh, we had we had talked last time about uh, being hacked and uh, and you look at hackers and stuff and that, we, we, if you need to go back and listen to that other message uh, but being hacked is no fun uh, and most times that comes with a heavy cost and so we had talked about the not only uh, uh, as a computer uh, situation being hacked uh, but we also talked about cancer cells and one of the gravest of diseases that we could ever uh, have is taking probably more lives than most any other disease and uh, many of us could probably say that we have a very high chance that uh, we will at least have it if that causes our uh, final breaths are not uh, that's to be determined but we do know that that is a very uh, tough thing to beat and to beat it it, it changes your life and uh, those things that it does and uh, when I'm referring to chemo chemotherapy you lose your hair you lose your identity uh, and so when you look at those things it's it's no different in the spiritual world it's no different in what they call religion what we call religion what we call uh, churches today and um, it, it's really why many people are, are so turned off about it others may be just be ignorant about it and don't care about it and they just want to do their own thing or maybe they've had bad experiences or you know uh, that's usually the case uh, but I am persuaded that that there are many people if not everyone, uh, the Bible said that we all have a measure of faith. Uh, where we apply that faith, I think, is up to us. And uh, But nevertheless, uh, today I just wanted to kind of give a, an excerpt of what uh, a little larger message uh, will be coming soon. But uh, anyhow... Uh, this this next one I, I feel that the, is is kind of tied to not only being hacked but the cause where uh, the the tool used to hack us and uh, we've the message would be virus um, and uh, when you look at a virus uh, you know we've we've just been through this pandemic I cannot for the life of me understand or um, figure out neither scripturally uh, things that God chose not to reveal at least to my knowledge at this point how such a virus could affect so many people so drastically uh, many lost their lives uh, I know personally for me uh, I was in in bed for almost six days uh, I didn't want to eat all I wanted to do was sleep and with no energy it zapped every ounce of strength that I had and so when you look at that when you look at something as great and impactful as that um, it just it really just befuddles me for lack of a better term, I guess, uh, to understand, one, why it happened to just about everybody and how quick it 
moved through the world. It's like, you know, you think it's just me. I'm here, a little pin dot on a map of the whole world, and it reached me. How could something like that happen? And, uh, you know, we didn't go stand in line for it. None of us went to seek it out. Uh, so just just the whole thing is really, um, and nothing happens without God's approval. I don't say that he, when, you, when I say approval, it doesn't mean that he, it, it rather means that he allowed it to happen. Not, not that he approves of it happening, but there are greater things that can come out of it. Uh, all things, the Bible says, work to the good for those that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. And so when you look at that, we have to trust in him. And I trusted in him. And uh, he He healed me. Uh, he, I came through. And I just thank God for that. Um, it, it redefines purpose for many uh, when you go through something as, as um, comes at you and you're so off guard. Um, I don't know that there was any way to keep from this. Uh, but anyhow, uh, virus. I just wanted to read the dictionary meaning of virus. Uh, it'll be an infective agent that typically consist of a nucleic acid molecule in a protein coat is too small to be seen by light microscopy and is able to multiply only within the living cells of a host now start get your get your gears turning here in a spiritual sense it, it's it's only able to multiply within the living cells of a host so there is something that's bringing it um, and to infect, all right? Uh, continuing on in that definition, an infection or disease caused by a virus, all right? Um, a harmful or corrupting influence. When you think of molecular, you think of viral, you think of uh, uh, droplets in the air so small that you can't see them. Um, traveling along getting in your system through your nasal um, so when you look at this it's an infecting agent um, it's a corrupting influence and when you get around people when you subject yourself to spirits it could be the spirits of man uh, could be the spirits of demons hiding within man uh, but it comes in a coat in a protein coat now think about that protein coat something that, that looks good sounds good but it's masked it is hidden it's cloaked so when, when you see what a virus brings, the intent of a virus being carried in a host, the intent is to take over. The intent is to control. And so when we look at the computer side of this, um, a computer virus, You've, you've all heard it's went viral. Viral meaning that it, it has jumped from one host to another host within host and infecting many, many systems. And the, the bloodline for a computer is, for the information would be the internet. So it will spread through the internet, it will travel through the electrons, through your internet, whether it be Wi-Fi or what have you. Um, so it's a piece of code that is capable of copying itself and typically has a detrimental effect, such as corrupting the system 
or destroying data. I want you to focus on the spiritual sense of that. Corrupting the system. I call religion a system today. And that's exactly what it is by definition of what the Bible says, what Jesus said about the scribes and the Pharisees. It matches near perfect to everything that Jesus called out the scribes and Pharisees for. Now get this, many men go, oh yeah, you know, the church thing. <laughs> Jesus came on the scene, understand, the old law was in effect. When Jesus came, it was it's called the new covenant. A new and living way, the Bible says. Jesus came on the scene. And I often say, look, Jesus didn't go to the religious world and the religious sects and set up a meeting and say, listen, guys, uh, we're going to have a conference. Things are about to change drastically. And uh, you guys are going to play this role. When I leave, you guys can come back in and uh, you, you, can, you can host church again. But it, now it'll be in my name. <laughs> That wasn't it at all. But that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what religion is today. That's exactly what church is today. And, and whatever flavor you want, it's available. I think there's 44,000 uh, varieties of faiths today called churches. Um, at least that's what the internet says. Um, that's what some report on, on YouTube. Uh, so when you look at that, you have an infected system. And Jesus came to abolish the system. So get this again. He did not come in and say, hey, look here. This is the way it's going to be. Nope. What did Jesus do? He worked right outside. He did not go to the system. He did not try to reboot the system. He went outside the system. And Jesus went and picked 12 men and he called them disciples. And these were the ones that he was going to teach doctrine to. That was his teaching. And what did he say? Come follow me. Did he say, hey, we're gonna reboot the system of Moses? No, he did not say that. He said, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. This is why there was such friction because Jesus did not go to a quasi pastor, quasi priest and get an okay and, and say, hey, this is, this is where we're at. You know, I'm gonna be coming in, we're gonna be changing things. So, you know, hold on. No, he gave no explanation to these folks, right? He let them know where they were such hypocrites. What Jesus was doing was saying how this system, the law of Moses, could not bring perfection. Now, if you want scripture for that, Hebrews uh, 12 or 13, verse 39, without us talking about without Jesus coming and, and fulfilling the, the promise, the Holy Ghost, a people for his name, resetting, rebooting, not the system, but the way. He said, I am the way. Did he say the law of Moses was the way? No, he did not. Did he say church was the way? No, he said, my church, I will build and the gates of hell will pro not prevail against it. Now, when you see his church, if it was a physical church, it would still be there today because nothing would have been able to take it down. But the Lord told the lady at the well, the Samaritan, he said, the time is come and now is when the true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. And what the whole conversation was about, she had come to the well because that was their father Jacob's well. And they come there to worship. And he said, the time is, the time will come and now is when the true worshipers, it will not be a place. It will not be uh, a building 
but it will be in spirit and in truth. Now, it, it, I, I point this out many times, the fact that spirit and truth, the Bible says the law came by who? Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I find it very interesting that truth is there along with grace. So you have those two, truth. He said the spirit of truth when it's come. That's the Holy Ghost. That's God's spirit, not the spirit of man. When you go to churches today, you're receiving that man's spirit. You're, you're, you're quiescing to his authority, to his version of faith, his version of how to tell you to live for Jesus, which is not Jesus. And we know that because we know that those that follow Jesus will glorify him. And the Holy Ghost does not have to compete with man. You will be taught by the Holy Ghost. And and if I could here, I'm gonna I'm gonna read a a, a scripture here. And this here, um, make this your go-to scripture. Um, this is this is first John two and verse twenty seven. And I'm gonna start at twenty six to, to give you flavor. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. So if you want the promise, if you want eternal life, then here it is. This is what John is saying. Verse 27, but the anointing which ye have received of him, who's him? Jesus abideth in you. Here we go. And ye need not that any man teach you. Those are pro, uh, drastic statement. That is a drastic statement. It goes on. But as the same anointing teacheth you all things, some things just up to this point, and then man takes over just up to a certain point. And then you got to go to Sunday school, seminary, or you got to go uh, find a find a Hebrew uh, speaking and understanding uh, person to better understand. You need to go to college, seminary. You need to do all this. No, 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 no. None of that is in here. As a matter of fact, and I, I apologize for stopping in the middle of the scripture, but, but the, the scribes and Pharisees said that they knew that these men were ignorant and unlearned. See, that's, that's exactly what the religious system is today. They look at you and say you're ignorant and you're unlearned. But see, when you come up with something, and when God touches you, he heals you, he gives you, uh, uh, set your feet on solid ground, you understand the Bible, you walk in there, they perceive that you are ignorant and unlearned because you're not with their program. You are not uh, adjusted to their system. You are not in their hierarchical status. You don't know to address a pastor as, hey, he's the master pastor, uh, and he's the associate pastor, and you know, this is the youth director, this is the this is the minister of music. You you don't understand those things. So they look at you as ignorant and unlearned just like the religious system of the scribes and Pharisees under the law of Moses, because it was taught and that's the way it was. You had to come to man to reach God. It's the tabernacle plan. This was in force under the old law. For years and years, and this is what they were taught. And so when you look at that, you can understand why the the change in the 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 uh, abrupt feathers getting ruffled the the religious society uh 
wanted to stand about Jesus. No, no, no. This is not how it works. And these 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 disciples received beatings, scourgings, and and and, and eventually death because they didn't go with the system. This is how it's going to end, my friend. This is how it's going to end. When the Antichrist, when the one world government, when the one world religion comes in, when the Catholic Church brings in all of its daughters, Pentecostal, oneness, all y'all are gonna come under mama's wing. That's really going to happen. And those that God has chosen that may be part of remnants throughout, sprinkled throughout these organizations that God is going to pull out. He's going to call out and you're going to be where I am today. Not that I've arrived or anything. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're going to see the religious system for what it is. It is a system of man. And so uh, let's finish that scripture. Uh, I apologize for getting off a tangent, but I, I felt it's needful. So again and is truth and is no lie it's like i am not playing here i'm not kidding and even as it hath taught you ye shall abide in him now i want to read this again in its entirety 26 and 27 of first john chapter 2 these things have i written unto you concerning them that seduce you but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now what did Jesus say? Albeit when the spirit of truth is come, the comforter, the promise, the rest, which he shall cause the weary to rest, is not a Sunday, it's not, it's not a day anymore, it's the Holy Ghost, it's the spirit of God, where you cease from your works, and you are now being led by the spirit of God, as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. So today, you need the Holy Ghost. Today, you need to be taught and led by the Holy Ghost. As you read God's word, he will show you these things. He will show you what the meaning of these things is. You have to put faith in him. You have to release yourself from the system. You have to release yourself from the man, from the man that is skewing, twisting scriptures to their own destruction and to yours as well. Today is the day of salvation. Today you can have freedom. He did not just bring freedom from the devil, but he brought freedom from man. You are under the power and the, the, the choice of man under the old law. You were the tabernacle plan was in force. You had to be forgiven by man. Man's choice brought you to God for forgiveness or condemned you. And you see how quick man was to condemn the lady that was caught in adultery when Jesus was standing there and began writing on the ground and they began one by one to walk away. And he said, if any person, any man is without sin here, let him be the first to throw the stone. And when you, he began writing, and I don't know what he wrote. Uh, it's not told, but maybe that was sins. Maybe he pointed out. Maybe he just did an arrow to each person. I don't know. But I do know that no one felt worthy to throw that stone after what he told them, what he said to them. And that, my friend, was something very important to learn. So when you look at those things, sorry, I was just, there's a bee out here. Um, but anyhow, when we look at those things, Jesus 
is number one. If you put yourself subservient unto a man, when you take this virus, this virus has already infiltrated a church called the system. And this system will flow right on into the larger system. They are all part of a larger spirit that is deceiving man and women today. You are being taught, you are being learned, you are, you are being taught their system. You are being taught the way that they want you to act, the way that they want you to look. And you, no longer, you may come to God with an experience. You may go to their churches, their assemblies, what they call a church, uh, little c. You will go there and then they will retrain you. See, they want you to know God the way they want you to know God. It does not matter for you knowing God. It matters if you follow their lead. If you will listen to them instead. And you are going to put your resources to them because they know better. You're ignorant. You're unlearned. And they're going to train you. And, and what Jesus said, you make them a twofold child of hell more than ye yourselves. And that's exactly what's happening today by religion. And again, I label religion as the system because that's what I see Jesus labeled as. And then that system you have has the virus. There is a virus and it came through the system. The host is the system. And I tell you today, you must get out of that system. You must be taught of God, the Holy Ghost. You must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins and you shall receive. It will come. You shall receive the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the promise, the rest, and the comforter. You will. And, and, and when you look, there are so many things, and we've talked about this before, how so many things are so opposite that happens in the churches. I say that lightly. Uh, not God's church, but man's church. Man's construct. They have big prayer meetings. Very, very same things that Jesus said. Oh, they just, they love to sit in the high seats. They love the, the long phylacteries. Uh, and they, they love to be noticed and seen of men. Oh, they're, they're, I'm the pastor. Hey, this is the associate pastor. This is, this is the other titles, whatever you want to give yourself, whatever they give you. It's an honor. They, they lift up man when Jesus explicitly said not to. He, you have one master, one, not one representing Jesus, one master, Jesus. Why would you want to go through someone else when you can have Jesus yourself? That's what the middle wall partition was ripped down for. That's what the veil was torn in half for. Now you, my friend, and I have access directly to God himself through the face and the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, which brought us back to the communion with God through Christ and today you can have that today i can have that because jesus died for our sins to where we do not have to go through man to talk to god and receive of him the benefits that he offers daily god bless you and we will be in touch soon and thank you for listening and i hope you have a great week this week uh finishing out the uh week uh, there's great weather here in the Midwest, and uh, we're enjoying every day of it. And uh, again, I pray for y'all, and I ask God to move to those that would listen.